All right, this is Nate Sir with Bright Agri Tech, and today I'm going to talk very quickly about phosphorus and phosphate in your system. So phosphorus is the P in our NPK rating. Do you guys remember that? Um, we've already talked about nitrogen in detail. Next on the list is phosphorus. Okay, phosphorus is a really, really important element in plant growth and development. Phosphorus is key in a lot of uh, cellular metabolism and a lot of the operations uh, that plants do internally. Phosphorus is uh, kind of one of these key components. Now it doesn't get a whole lot of attention in aquaponics because it's simply not deficient that off often. Usually there's enough phosphorus uh, in most systems. Now, when people do start seeing phosphorus deficiency in aquaponic systems is when they're uh, growing plants that are primarily reproductive producers, so they're producing fruit, seed, flower, that kind of things, things like tomatoes and cucumbers, things that are kind of nutrient hogs when it comes to pot potassium, potassium and, and phosphorus. When they're growing these crops, what they'll start to see is a slight uh, phosphorus deficiency in uh, many of their production beds. So phosphorus is mostly bioavailable in the form of phosphate, okay? And this is PO4 Two minus. And um, this molecule floats around in solution and uh, it is very, very, very soluble. So uh, it dissolves very easily into solution, but it's also really desirable. A lot of algae really, really like phosphate. And in fact, a lot of natural ecosystems are actually limited by phosphate. So as soon as you start adding phosphorus to the water, you'll see big algae blooms. And uh, these big algae blooms can be very bad for rivers and streams, lakes, and oceans. So um, this is kind of one of these things that we have to be really careful with in agriculture, not to apply too much, simply because it is soluble, it dissolves really easily, and it flows away with our runoff. In aquaponic systems, that's not as much of a concern. But it is nice to know that this is a really soluble nutrient, and it doesn't really precipitate out very often with the exception of you know very high pH ranges and with very low pH ranges. So this is uh, typically not something we have to worry about. However, if you do plan on growing tomatoes, cucumbers, things that are kind of uh, nutrient hogs and, and do a lot of reproductive growth, that is growth of fruits, and seeds, and flowers, then um, you definitely need to keep an eye on your phosphate. Now typically when phosphate is deficient, you'll see purpling of the leaves. And um, that's, uh, that's the most common way to notice phosphate deficiency. Now definitely check out a um, deficiency key because there's other symptoms as well. But um, keep an eye out for purpling. And uh, what most, most folks don't know is you, oftentimes even in aquaponic systems where phosphate isn't uh, showing up as a deficiency on your plants, it's often not available in high enough amounts to keep your plants really producing if you're growing things like tomatoes. So, some aquaponics growers may choose to supplement phosphate. So what I recommend for folks that want to grow tomatoes, cucumbers, some of these fruiting crops, is that you actually have two different systems. You have one system where you're willing to supplement some phosphate and perhaps some more potassium, and you have another system where you're growing your greens and herbs. And my reason for that is that adding potassium and adding phosphate can actually stimulate reproductive growth which is something we don't want to do in our vegetative system. So in our reproductive system, where we're growing tomatoes, where we're growing cucumbers, um, one thing we can do is actually add a little rock phosphate. So this is a naturally occurring rock form of phosphate, and um, it typically comes as a powder, and it's something that you can break up and add to your system um, in relatively small quantities. And um, one caveat here is that if you do add rock phosphate to your system, make sure you are shading your fish production part of the system. Because what this can do is actually cause an algae bloom if you're providing a lot of light to your fish. And that's something we don't want to do. So what we do with this rock phosphate in our reproductive system, not in our vegetative system, is we can take this and we can take a very small amount and we can actually sprinkle it on our grow bed. And what this does is it acts as kind of a slow release fertilizer that starts releasing phosphate into the root zone of our grow bed. Now it's important to sprinkle this kind of along the top and make sure that you're not um, over irrigating your grow beds. And ideally, 
if you add this at kind of the right amount, what you end up with is uh, kind of this fertility zone around your root zone in your vegetative system and your tomatoes and your cucumbers and the crops that you're trying to get reproductive growth out of will actually be absorbing this almost as fast as it's entering the solution in your vegetative grow bed. For tower systems, uh, we recommend actually adding this to the solution um, either in your sump tank or in one of your fish subsystems. So uh, what we do is we actually take some of this and we drop it into um, one of our mineralization tanks. It's a we're actually raising fish in it, but it is kind of a, it's a settlement slash mineralization tank. We'll drop it down in there and that will slow release phosphate to our system. And it's a really nice supplement if you are struggling with uh, phosphate production. Now, um, I will say that the phosphate rating is lower typically than potassium or nitrogen. So you don't need to add a whole lot of this stuff. Uh, but the nice thing about ro rock phosphate is that unless you're adding relatively obscene quantities, uh, you're not going to do a whole lot of damage to your system. It's a nice, simple um, way to supplement phosphate in a lot of aquaponic systems. So for an example of kind of the amount that you should be adding, um, for your kind of typical IBC system, I would take about that much rock phosphate. That's probably about um, an ounce of rock phosphate. And I would crush it up and I would kind of sprinkle about half of it around uh, the top of the grow bed and I would set aside the other half. I would watch the system really carefully and make sure that you don't uh, stimulate an algae bloom. Now you should see a response in your plants within the first week or two weeks. And um, if you're growing tomatoes, something like that, you'll find that they require additions on a regular basis. And if you are adding rock phosphate appropriately to your system, you will definitely see a bump in your tomato and or cucumber, eggplant, any kind of fruiting crop production. So you can find rock phosphate online if you're interested in supplementing. Again, with the caveat, you only really need to supplement this in vegetative system or in uh, reproductive systems. In vegetative systems, you could add maybe a little bit from time to time if you're concerned about it, but by and large, you don't need to, to use this stuff. So. Um, that is phosphate, all you need to know, quick and dirty. If you're interested in more information, please visit the Vertical Food blog. I'll talk about it in more detail. Or feel free to ask questions in the new webinar series we're uh, enrolling folks for. Uh, feel free to sign up for that. It's going to be an hour where I just answer whatever questions that you have about your system. There's no system too big or too small. Uh, we're here to help. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you find this useful, please subscribe. So a lot of people have asked about fish. What's an appropriate fish for my aqua?